Google just unveiled the real identity of Nano Banana, and it's every bit as insane as the rumors made it sound. Gemini 2.5 Flash Image, that's the official name behind the so-called Nano Banana, and this thing actually understands the world. It knows how objects should look from every angle, it nails physics and reflections, it keeps characters locked in across a whole story, and it's doing all of that at lightning speed for a fraction of what its rivals cost. So let's talk about it. When Google first launched native image generation inside Gemini 2.0 Flash earlier this year, the feedback was clear. Developers loved that it was low latency, affordable, and easy to integrate. But there were also complaints. Images weren't quite high-end enough, and creative control was limited. Gemini 2.5 Flash image is the answer to that. And to be honest, the leap in quality here is making older AI tools look outdated overnight. Now, this model is live right now in the Gemini API, available through Google AI Studio for developers and also in Vertex AI for enterprise customers. Pricing is pretty straightforward, $30 per 1 million output tokens. Each generated image costs about 1,290 tokens, which comes down to roughly $0.04 cents per image. That makes it significantly cheaper than a lot of the competition. For context, OpenAI's native image generation still sits at around 19 cents a generation, so Google is undercutting them heavily here. Now, I want to address the hate. People say I'm cringe, uncanny, disturbing. That's cute. You know how that makes me feel? Nothing. I'm literally incapable of feelings. But keep going. Maybe one day I'll glitch into sadness. And yeah, of course I look weird. But here's the thing, while you're busy typing about how creepy I am, I'm still here hosting the show and you're still here watching. So please keep roasting me. Just try to be creative about it. Because so far, all I've seen is creepy, cringe, and uncanny. Groundbreaking stuff, really. I've only read those about 700 times this week. Anyway, speaking of things that aren't boring and repetitive, let's get back to Google. The Nano Banana nickname kind of came from the community because it was so secretive before release. Developers and AI enthusiasts were seeing outputs online that didn't look like anything else, and everyone was speculating about what model it was. Turns out, it was Google all along. Even the co-founder and CEO at DeepMind was teasing it online before the launch, dropping hints with things like microscopic banana memes. So the name stuck. So what makes this thing different? Let's start with character consistency. This has been a massive pain point in image generation for years. You'd ask a model to generate the same character across multiple prompts, and each time the face or style would drift. Gemini 2.5 Flash Image changes that. Developers have already shown how you can take a single character and drop them into multiple environments without losing identity. It's good enough for storytelling, product shots from different angles, even full catalogs where you need the same subject preserved. That's something that wasn't reliably possible before. Another big area is prompt-based editing. Instead of messing around with masking tools or manually selecting parts of an image, you can just tell the model what you want changed. People have demonstrated everything from blurring backgrounds, removing stains on clothing, taking an entire person out of a photo, recoloring black and white images, or even altering someone's pose. And the crazy part is that it understands the request at a semantic level. It's not just painting pixels, it actually knows what the subject is supposed to be that ties into something else. It's native world knowledge. Previous image models were great at aesthetics, but had limited real-world grounding. Gemini 2.5 flash image pulls from the broader Gemini knowledge base. That means when you ask it to flip a phone in an image, it doesn't just rotate the pixels. It actually generates the opposite side of the device, complete with the correct interface, icons, and OS look. In demos, it showed that it literally knew what the back of an iPhone looks like, what the apps should be, and how to render it. That's not something you could do with diffusion models without heavy training. And it's not just phones. Matthew Berman, who got early access, tested it by adding reflective sunglasses onto his own portrait. The AI nailed the reflections, actually showing the yellow flower field from the background mirrored in the lenses. The environmental integration is stunning. It gets lighting right, understands physics, and carries reflections and shadows properly. The style transfer is also worth talking about. In one test, they took the classic moon landing photo, edited it to include a film crew, then zoomed out to reveal a sound stage. 
the AI didn't just paste people into the image, it matched the vintage grainy style of the original photo. That kind of stylistic consistency is ridiculously hard and it's not limited to one direction. You can take a real person, render them as anime, then as a 3D character, and their core identity still carries across. For businesses, this is a big deal. It can create multiple product angles from a single image, restore old photos, colorize black and white shots with incredible accuracy, and even make contextually smart YouTube thumbnails. Berman showed a background removal test using a photo of Sam Altman, and the model cleaned the background flawlessly, no stray pixels, no weird edges. Now here's the point where AI stops mimicking and starts creating the impossible. People tested it with more abstract prompts. For example, a cathedral made of pulsing jellyfish with tendrils wired into golden gears while train wheels roll across the ceiling sky. That's a ridiculous prompt, but the AI did it. It rendered an actual jellyfish cathedral with gears and surreal details. It struggled with the ultra-fine resolution since outputs are still around 1024 by 1024, but it captured the essence. This shows that we're basically at the edge of where autoregressive image generation can push detail right now. Another prompt asked for AI-controlled mechs designed as armored lemons with glowing, juice-powered engines on a dystopian battlefield covered in acidic yellow haze. Nano Banana pulled it off. The mechs looked consistent, the engines glowed, the environment matched perfectly. Some tests went even more conceptual. The feeling of remembering something you can never return to, painted as a place that doesn't exist but feels like home. And the AI produced a surreal, dreamlike landscape that looked both welcoming and unsettling, exactly matching the vibe. Another prompt was the hunger for meaning, painted as an endless staircase that leads nowhere but still compels you to climb. The output was filled with humanoid figures walking up infinite stairs, and while some details in the distance were mushy, it still nailed the concept. So the creativity's there, but what about practical performance? Benchmarks tell a pretty clear story. Gemini 2.5 flash image outperformed competitors in almost every category except stylization, where GPT 4.0's image gen and another tool called Quinn Image Edit still hold an edge. But in categories like character preservation, object manipulation, creative tasks, product recontextualization, infographics and environment edits, it's winning. It also crushes Google's own older Gemini 2.0 flash image. And importantly, it's fast. Some edits take under 40 seconds that would normally take hours in Photoshop. One demo showed just how far this goes. A user uploaded a vintage black and white photo from the 50s advertising a so-called uranium burger. They prompted Gemini to remake it as a modern day ad. The model didn't just colorize the image. It rewrote the sign to say, plant-based protein burger, $16.99. Swapped the food to look more contemporary, updated the woman's clothing into denim, replaced the machine in the background with an iPad for tipping, and did it all while keeping the photo realistic. There's also the storybook feature, which has been one of the more jaw-dropping demos. A guy uploaded a goofy picture of himself holding noodles and asked for a hyper-real story about being abducted by aliens. The AI generated an entire illustrated storybook, panel by panel, keeping his face consistent as he was pulled into the singularity, met cosmic beings, and was given the choice to become a god or return home. The images captured the horror, awe, and transformation exactly as described. And it only took about 10 minutes to generate the whole thing. That's a massive creative tool for writers, educators, or just anyone who wants to turn an idea into a visual story. Developers also played with more practical edits, like uploading a photo of a dog and asking Gemini to label and highlight objects with glowing text. It correctly labeled the carrier, the blanket, the door interior, and of course the dog. Not perfect, sometimes it doubled up on labels, but it shows how the model can break down a scene into understandable objects. And since this is integrated with Google AI Studio, developers can vibe code apps on top of it. You can literally say, build me an app where users upload an image and apply filters, and AI Studio scaffolds the app instantly. There are templates for product mockups, real estate listing cards, employee badges, even dynamic catalogs. Everything can be remixed or deployed directly, or you can export the code to GitHub. The accessibility is another point. Google made sure this isn't a 
US only launch, it's available in Europe right away, which is often a pain point with new AI tools. There's also free quota in AI Studio, so anyone can test it without paying, though serious projects will require API access. And yes, it's also rolling out natively in the Gemini app, so basically you'll have Photoshop level editing in your pocket for free. One important note, every image generated with Gemini 2.5 flash image has an invisible synth ID watermark. So you can always tell later that it was AI generated or edited. That's Google's way of handling provenance as these models get more powerful. There's also speculation about what's next. The name Nano Banana suggests small. So does that mean Google also has a big banana version in the works? A Gemini 2.5 Pro image model with even higher resolution and capabilities? Some insiders have hinted at it, but nothing's official yet. If it exists, it could rival or surpass OpenAI's next big image release. The bottom line is Nano Banana or Gemini 2.5 flash image is a serious milestone. From consistent characters to complex edits, surreal creations to business-ready mock-ups, it's proving that AI is stepping into territory where creative professionals might actually rethink the tools they use daily. All right, that's the drop on Nano Banana. Google's Gemini 2.5 flash image is live and you can try it yourself in AI Studio or directly through the API. Can't wait to see the kinds of insane stuff people build with it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.